in Columbia, South Carolina today, where the state is holding its Democratic Party convention. Here's my panel, Jason Johnson, politics editor for The Root and an MSNBC political contributor, and Atima O'Mara, a Democratic strategist. Well, uh, Atima, uh, Cory Booker's taken the stage, and uh, he's about to start speaking. Let's listen in. Now look, look, a whole lot of people running for president these days. 2020 election does not stand for the year. It stands for the number of people running, 2020. But you all know in this room where power comes from. It doesn't come from an individual or an office. It comes from the grassroots. You all are the power. You all are the purpose. You all are what's going to help us win. Look, I, I live in a low-income inner-city community. We don't mistake wealth with worth where I live. We know where power comes from. Look, I want to tell you the truth. I, when I first came to the inner city of Newark, New Jersey, the neighborhood I still live in, I had this idea coming as a Yale law student that I was going to help turn around the country. I was going to lead things. But I met a grassroots leader who was a tenant president in the projects in which I lived for almost a decade. And I still remember when I told her, she goes, why are you here? I'm here to help you. And she goes, if you want to help me, you got to come down to the street and tell me what you see in your, my neighborhood. And, and she goes, describe what you see. And I described the projects and an abandoned building being used for drugs. I, I talked about the graffiti, and I described what I saw. But the more that I talked, the more this woman looked at me like she was upset with me. And, and I finally said, what's wrong? And she goes, boy, you need to understand something. The world you see outside of you is a reflection of what you have inside of you. And if you're one of those people who looks around my community and all you see is problems, and darkness and despair, that's all there's ever going to be. But if you're one of those people who every time you open your eyes, you're stubborn, you see hope, you see opportunity, you see love, then you can be one of the people that helps me. I want to tell you a lot of folks are talking about themselves, but I want to talk about you. Because what I learned in the city of Newark, eventually becoming the mayor of that city, that the hope for our community did not lie in one individual in one office. It lied with the people and our ability to come together and stand together and work together and fight together and win together. And so let me tell you right now, let me tell you right now, a lot of people want to make this election all about Donald Trump. Well, let me tell you, I'm running for office because we will beat Donald Trump. But let me tell you, let me tell you, that's not all we need to do. Beating Donald Trump is the floor, it's not the ceiling. Beating Donald Trump gets us out of the valley, but it does not get us to the mountaintop. I'm running for office because I believe that we as a people can get to the mountaintop. I'm not running because of what we're against. We as a party must stand up for what we're for. We are for, in the United States of America, once and for all, health care being a right for all Americans. We are for every job in America having a living wage, the right to organize, the right to retire with security. We are for public education and making sure that public school teachers are paid what they are worth and raising their salaries. We are for ending the school to prison pipeline. We are for standing up to make sure that we don't stick our head in the ground on climate change, but this is the nation that leads us out of this crisis. I want you all to know this election has to be about us. So many people think that we want to make it all about him. I, I walked into a town hall up in Iowa, a man comes up to me, puts his arm around me before I spoke and says, hey man, I want you to punch Donald Trump in the face. And I look at that, that guy and I go, hey man, that's a felony. <laughs> we will not beat Donald Trump by fighting him using his tactics on his turf, on his terms. He wants this election to be about hate. We better make it about love. He wants to make this election about tearing people down. We're going to make it about building people up. 
He wants to make this election about dividing folks. We are going to unite this country and put more indivisible into this one nation under God. I want you all to know, I still go home to Newark. We had seven people shot in my community just last week. The problems we faced were going on before Donald Trump was in office. We live in a perilous time. We could be the first generation of Americans to have lower life expectancy than our one before. We see this nation now, baby boomers, 95% did better economically than their parents. We're down to 50-50. I know we got to beat Donald Trump, but there's something else in the balance. This is not a referendum on him. It's a referendum on who we are to each other. And we are a nation of love. And so I want to tell you right now, they made a mistake giving me a hammer. I want to tell you all right now, where Martin Luther King was slain, I was taught by that woman on the fifth floor of the projects that hope is the active conviction that despair will never have the last word. Where Martin Luther King was slain, they decided not to write a tribute to him. They decided to write a challenge to us. Where King was slain, there is words there that, that are Joseph's words, Joseph's brother's words that they uttered before they grabbed him and threw him into a ditch. These are the words that are written where King is slain, a challenge to us. The words from Genesis, it says, Behold, here cometh the dreamer. Let us slay him and see what becomes of the dream. Well, this is a referendum on the dream. We now in our generation have to stand up and dream again. Bold dreams and defiant dreams, dreams of love, dreams that our ancestors fought and died for. And I want to ask you, South Carolina, will you stand and dream with me again? Will you dream America again? Will we dream this country anew? Bold dreams, defiant dreams. If we dream together and work together and love together, we won't just beat Donald Trump, but we will make it to the mountaintop and we will get to the promised land. Thank you. Thank you, South Carolina. It's time for the dream again. Back with me, Jason Johnson, political editor for The Root, and Atima Amara, a Democratic strategist. Well, we heard Cory Booker, and uh, Cory Booker was preaching and, uh, uh, and uh, talking about dreaming and talking about it's more than just going after Donald Trump, but it's about restoring dreaming in America. Will that resonate with voters? I think it certainly will with a certain generation of voters, and I think younger folks who are really looking at this election uh, and a new way of doing things, right? Well, millennials, Gen Zers especially, um, Gen Xers even, um, a new promise on civil rights, a new promise on the economy. Um, how can we move forward as a country restructuring it in a way um, that has opportunity for everyone? Because a lot of folks feel like some of the ways that have like happened in the last several years have not worked. The full promise of America has not been realized for everyone still. Jason? So once the collection plate is done being passed, you know, it's a whole <laughs> that I saw, I expected old ladies to be running in the aisle and taking their hats off. Um, look, it, it was very impressive. But the, but the bigger thing I noticed about Cory Booker since I got here is not that yard signs mean everything, but he has a crowd out here. I mean, yeah. he had one of the largest. Cory Booker. Yeah, Cory Booker. He had one of the largest contingents of people here at this convention and outside. And his speech, while it's good, it's a classic, you know, enthusiastic Cory Booker speech. It looks like he has a really good on the ground organization, and that's what he's going to need. If he survives past Iowa, he's going to need a good showing here. He's going to need zealots on the ground, and if this crowd is in the indicator, he's got them here. You've got the polls saying that Joe Biden is way ahead with black voters. Uh, you have two African Americans in the race. You have Kamala Harris, senator from California, you have Cory Booker, we just saw from New Jersey, who'll be joining me shortly. What will upset the perception of who has the command of the black vote. If Biden does not win the black vote in South Carolina, what does that say? If he wins overwhelmingly and Kamala Harris or Cory Booker, I mean, what do they have to show in South Carolina? 
They're definitely going to have to show that they can get a large demographic of voters. For them, both seem to be the play. A lot of, a lot of younger black voters are still shopping, and they're still looking at Senator Booker, and they're still looking at Senator Harris very seriously. Um, over 50, a lot more of African-American voters are interested in Biden, but some of them are also still shopping, right? So it's still early yet. I think Biden has higher name recognition than both, but both of them clearly, by their presence, looking at, like, so many Cory Booker heads right now, <laughs> is that there's a lot, a lot of energy on this ground, and they know that this is going to be crucial for them to keep carrying on um, to Super Tuesday. Biden wins Iowa is done. He'll run the table. If Biden only wins Iowa by, say, two points, if he's 31 to 29 against Harris and Harris ends up winning South Carolina, then we could have a Hillary Obama situation for the next four or five months as they compete together. His control of black voters is based on the same thing that happened with Obama and Hillary. Black people only think white people will vote for Biden. If someone can demonstrate that white voters would be willing to vote for a Cory Booker or vote for a Castro or vote for a Kamala Harris, then Joe Biden's his support amongst black voters will evaporate by the time he gets here, if he loses in Iowa. Well, the fact that you have two African Americans dilute a, a, a consolidated African American vote for a consolidated candidate, right. and then we see who comes ahead. I remember 2004, yeah. Carol Mosley Brown and I was in, yeah. and one, a lot of my staff wanted we've got to do better than Carol. Right. Yeah. And do we have that same tension here with Kamala Harris? and with uh, Cory Booker. If they're still in the race, right? So, I, look, I just wrote a piece for The Root this week uh, about Senator Harris and working-class black men, right? right? People don't realize how important black men actually are in the South Carolina primary. There's more black men voting than white women or white men. And they're going to be a distinct constituency. She can't just run up the score with black women. She's got to win with black men, too. If Cory is still in the race... Well, and black men thing. were very significant in Alabama. They were only two or three points behind black women. Exactly. We exactly. talk about the black women vote, but... The I'll black woman, like, the black man both showed up, too. Well, exactly. Always two to three points behind black women. I will say yeah, that. Yeah, they were behind. <laughs> but when you're dealing in the 90s, that's yes. a significant that's an, oh, vote. absolutely that, a significant that's a huge percentage. Number. Yeah. And here's the thing. If, if her victory is contingent upon not having a gender split, right? right. Because she's already leading Corey in the gender, Senator Booker in the general polls. Exactly. Senator Booker, he's got to just build his numbers in general. He's about fifth or sixth place in the state, depending. He can't just depend on getting the black vote because I think they're going to either be between Biden and Harris, yeah. so he's going to have to have a more generalized strategy to win in this state, because I doubt he's going to win in Iowa. In this state, we also know that the black community and the general community is more conservative than in other states. Yeah. How do the more progressives play in this state? We talked and saw Bernie Sanders today, and Elizabeth Warren was here, and, and uh, Pete uh, Bettinger. How does that differ in terms of the reaction of voters here differently because this is still Bible Belt even in the black uh, part of the state which are the majority of the primary voters. Yeah. I think it's going to be talking a lot about the issues that are still very important to the Democratic primary electorate which is health care. It's the economy. It's really really fixing and making sure the Medicare for all is really taken off I think across the base of the Democratic Party and because it's something that we know is still a major issue that still needs to be improved upon. So focusing on issues that are sort of like the bread and butter while still being able to talk about abortion rights, civil rights, LGBTQ rights and talking about it an opportunity for all is really really I think going to resonate um, in a large way in these parts of the country. Progressives want to know that you can win. That is period. They, they're the ones who are like, we want Trump out of office. Yeah. So showing them that you have a plan to not just beat, it's, it's very similar to what Senator Booker just did. His plan is, look, it's not just about beating Donald Trump. It's about we've got to fix the problems that existed before he got into office and that will continue unabated while he's in office. So I think that's what a lot of progressives are looking for. They, 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 need, they need a victory speech. They need someone who can march through, not just somebody who's going to promise the same old, same old, because they know it's going to happen anyway. And to Jason's point, I think that's exactly why Elizabeth Moore is surging as well as she is. She's like she has a plan for that. Like now, that's not a that's a catchphrase that came out of she the people forum because she really has been putting forward aggressive policies of like we're not only are we going to oppose Trump, but we have a plan for how we can make a better America for everyone. All right, we're going to bring in former Vice President Joe Biden to the speaking right now. Let's listen in. 